I was in the sixth grade when I started playing music, <laughs> so I guess I was about 12, and then I didn't start to do Caribou until I was about 17. I was going into senior year of high school. So when I was a junior in high school, I was in a band called Mooney Monroe, and um, that was like my first um, like solo project, I guess, where I was just writing all the songs because before I'd been in bands where it's more collaborative thing. And um, after Mooney Monroe um, ended, because all the members went off to different colleges, um, I started just playing music, making music by myself, and um, uh, under the name Seafarer. And then um, after I released some stuff and I started to play some shows, I realized I couldn't play all the instruments by myself, so I got some friends and we changed the name to a Duke Caribou. That's the way it's been ever since. Um, the name of Duke Caribou was actually not what we were going to change it to, because originally we were Seafarer, and then I changed the name to um, I Do Care About You, but then a lot of people told me that I was too sissy, so I uh, changed it to kind of the same sounding thing, but I changed it to a Duke Caribou and it rhymed, so I thought it was catchy. Um, I've played in a lot of past bands. Uh, like I said, I started playing music in groups in like the sixth grade, and that was Cycle Lobotomy, and then I was in the Stone Soldiers, and then some other groups over the years. Um, I was in the Madrigals, Set Phases to Kill, Opaque Esquire, Ghost Tapes, Sunbeams and Bear Hugs, Party Girls, and the list goes on. <laughs> I was in a lot of bands in high school. Well, uh, I guess. Oh, that's a hard one. I don't know. I listen to a lot of music. Um, yeah, I really, I really don't know. I really can't nail one down. Um, Growing up, I listened to a lot of Weezer, though, I guess. Um, so I guess I'd have to put them down. I was like, all I listened to for like middle school. Then in high school, I just kind of listened to all sorts of things. Um, I got really into, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of things. That's a hard one to answer. That's a hard one to answer. It's pretty much. It's pretty much just like everything. I got into middle school, like, inspiration. Yeah, just everything. in general. Just in general. Um, it's been really fun. This was the first, because I played trumpet for like all of high school and middle school and it was like a pretty intensive music program and then I graduated and I just stopped playing it. Um, basically until Andy was like, oh you play trumpet? Do you want to come be in this band? Um, and now I play in like several bands and spend a lot of my time doing that so it's been really really fun to actually like be able to use that part of my life plus like I love the group of people and performing live is always a lot of fun especially because um, since we always do play like all ages venues like high school kids are way more fun to play for than like 20 somethings who are too cool to like have fun <laughs> so that's something that I really like about being in a do care room Well, Chris is my fiance. <laughs> so. Oh yeah. About ages told Lydia that we were engaged, and I was like, "Where's Lydia been?" Um. Yeah, Chris is my fiance, so I know him that way. Um. And. Yeah, everyone else I've just met through the band. I mean, except for Jeremiah, but he's a new addition. So he's a friend first, a Geo Caribou member second. <laughs> um, but he and Chris went to school together. Um, but yeah, like, these are some of my favorite people, so. Cool. And he's gonna be in the wedding. I'm gonna be in the wedding. Yeah. Looking good. <laughs> Making them look good. <laughs> 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 Um, I play in 
what is currently known as Brett and Blake, but is undergoing a identity change to No Aloha. Um, so it's a Portland-based band. It's like super influenced by like Weezer and the Pixies. Have you ever heard Brett and Blake? Yeah, you've been at a show. Play, play the show. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm the worst. Yeah, no, so that's that's something, and that band is growing daily. Chris is in it now. Um, along with Matt Hall is the new bassist. And then Ryan is now playing drums. And then our, we had a violinist and she quit, which is cool, I guess. Um, and then Brian Blake. But yeah, so there's that. And then, um, Chris has a project called The History of the Family, which is the secret menu item of this group of bands. So like, we don't really pr like promote the band or like pursue practice. playing shows or practice or do anything. But if someone's like, oh, we need someone to open for us. You guys want to do it? We're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then we'll have one practice like the day before and then we play the show. <laughs> so those are the three groups that, that I play with. Don't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> First rule. First rule of stuff. I was a plan. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> Secret. I've been playing trumpet since I was 11 years old, which is 13 <laughs> years, which is weird. Um, more than half of your life. Literally more than half of my life I've been playing trumpet. Um, yeah, like I said, like my high school band program was like super intensive. Um, played for the president once. I wasn't in the band at the time, but <laughs> <laughs> it happened. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, yeah, we were in the, the parades, all the parades and went in things. So yeah, a lot of time has been, a lot of time and, you know, private lesson money and parents driving around has been devoted to this instrument. So yeah.
I've been playing guitar since I was um, 15 years old, I think. It was one of those things where, like, you know, I just said, you, you just had to learn Wish You Were Here by, you know, mm, the Pink Floyd. Yeah, and that's the only, <laughs> yeah, and that's the only song I know. All of the, uh, <laughs> all of the Hidu Caribou songs are secretly just deviations of that, right, Andy? <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, so I was 15, so that would be 10 years. We're um, in every band together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as Kara, as Kara mentioned, I, I have a band called The History of a Family. And as she also mentioned, we don't really play a lot of shows. Um, we're working on recording some stuff. And we were working on it, like, pretty, pretty steadily for, like, Two weeks. <laughs> That's usually how it is. Yeah. So, so, but we just we need to make more time for that. Um, and then, yeah, I just um, recently joined No Aloha, um, yeah, which is yeah. which is Brett and Blake, um, and I play guitar sounds in that band too. Just space sounds. Yeah, I, it, it's because they they do more like chord 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 chord. Chord, 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 chord. I don't know. <laughs> Andy does a little picking things, and so and so. If I did that as well, it would be too much. And then, you know. So he just goes. Yeah. 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 I do caribou. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, probably um, Bedhead is probably my favorite band proper with like you know, guitarists and bassists and drummers and things. But I listen to a lot of ambient music, so um, Brian Eno's ambient series, Alluvium, um, let's see, Max Richter is a great neoclassical composer. Um, the Microphones, Mount Erie, those are excellent bands as well. Um, yeah, it's a lot of different, a lot of different stuff. But really, it just did you care. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I use a guitar, <laughs> an electric guitar, right now. It's a. Uh, uh, an Electro 58 reissue, um, but that's just because I broke the strings on my Les Paul Special um, and didn't want to replace them. And I used to play a 50th anniversary um, uh, HSS Strat, but I just need to get the jack fixed in that. So <laughs> clearly, I just need to uh, get my rear end gear. Get your gear and gear. Get my gear and gear. <laughs> I just need to get my gear and gear. <laughs> um, and then um, some effects pedals. I have a tuner pedal because I was always out of tune. Um, and you can vouch for that. Um, let's see. We've got we've got uh, an electro harmonics germanium distortion pedal, two cheap delay pedals, um, a holy grail volume pedal, and then at any live shows I run all that through a Fox AC-15. I was in a band called Lactating Midgets Rubbing Down Bleeding Wookies and we put out two albums and oh I was in a um, uh, what was it? It was a horse metal band called Horser and that didn't live too long and that was it. Gil Scott Heron. Um, yeah. Been really into Crass lately. <laughs> and uh, Burzum. And Asuk. And who 
I like Chris. Um, Klaus Nomi. Klaus Nomi. Oh, Prince. Prince. Oh, Prince. Prince. <laughs> yeah, you were listening to Purple Rain. Yeah. Uh, Great album. Peter, Paul, and Mary. I love 10 years together. That's a good one. That's good. What's your favorite Peter, Peter Paul, and Mary song? There's a lot. Is it Jet Plane? No. <laughs> Lemon Tree? Lemon Tree's good. Lemon Tree's really good. Uh, Stew Ball is good. Oh, yes. Um, so I like that's it. Only those <laughs> bands. <laughs> no other bands. Yeah. Chris I knew from high school. I don't remember when I met Andy. <laughs> Kara I met through Chris. Sam I've met like twice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is that everybody? Yeah, that's everybody. <laughs> it's been good. We haven't played a show yet, but um, we're getting there. <laughs> One, it's been fun. Yeah. Oh, it's your percussion, right? Uh, yeah. Let's go You can use it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all, of, all of the guitar parts actually for the second album were covered by Andy with the exception of a 30 second ambient part that I recorded so um, so that, that question is probably better directed to uh, oh yeah no, please, 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 please. oh okay uh, um, uh, it's about a year to make um our drummer had a really bad work schedule, so it was hard getting him in there. Um, it just took a really long time. <laughs> it felt really good to finish it though, because the songs were all like mm -hmm. two or three years old. So they were good, and they, they turned out really yeah, well too. It turned out really well. I do care about you. Buy it. Download and it. Just like, <laughs> just like flash up. Yeah, just flash up. <laughs> just like right. Like, you you get hand out. Right, like right Bye. here. I do care about you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. It took it took a long time. <laughs> um, it was really fun though. It's my first time actually like not recording in my basement, which is different. Um, we worked with a guy named Chris Ward, who did an amazing job. He was super cool. He knew what he was talking about, obviously. He was super good at keeping everything organized too. So he did a really good job. And then it was mastered by Stan. Stan Nightly. Nightly, Kylie. Is it Kylie? Is it Kylie? I would say Nightly. I think I say it to his face, too. You guys can, like, we can look it up. I don't want to be wrong, especially if I spell it. I feel like I feel bad now. If it's Kylie, I think I'm pretty sure it's Kylie. I'm like, yo, Stan Nightly. I see it, like, every time I see him. He's He probably has gotten that his whole life. He probably just thinks I'm like, yeah, that's true. Anyways, yeah, it took a long time, but it was fun. Sad teenage boy tears. That's not a good description. <laughs> she does. Um, <laughs> no, I was thinking about this, right? Because so when I'm at work and people find out that I'm in a band, oh, all these old, yeah. you know, older, mature people are like, "Well, what kind of band are you?" Is in? it alternative? Is it alternative? No, no. See, that, that's all. That's all. Rap? That's already too new age. You're like, so is it a rock and roll band? <laughs> Which is like with some bands, like with No Aloha, I can be like, "Yeah, it's a rock band." Like. We just play rock and roll because that's basically it, right? But um, no, I think it's like you write these pop songs, but they're not pop songs. It's like a garage pop or like a slop pop. Slop pop. Slop pop. Ooh, Ooh that's kind of. Yeah, that sounds like We're the most that right now. dessert ever. <laughs> you go <laughs> like, yeah, I ordered a box of slop pops from the Schwans, man. Schwans. <laughs> can't, can't wait oh to my get God. those. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I think it's it's poppy, but yeah. we don't care enough about it a lot of the time. It's drum-driven unintentionally. 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 <laughs> Due to Sam's personality. Due to Sam's personality. Sam's excess of yeah. personality. It's drum-driven. <laughs> and then, uh, and then yeah, you do, you do your cool little, sometimes like, bulky guitar yeah, lines and yeah, stuff. So. And I try to just get away with making as many like spaceship sounds yeah. as I can. Chris is really good at that. 
Well, I was at the Regal Center in my San Diego. Oh, yeah. Well, and this guy who I was buying popcorn from was like, hey, you want to do caribou? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then I paid full price for the popcorn, so. Well, I did. That's as famous as I've. Yeah. That's all the fame I'm seeing. I don't know what you're going to do. I did this with the. You said you got like a right of these instructions. Yeah. Uh, I, just did, I just did question C. Because you knew I had the one, the one. I, I had, yeah, did you get? Oh, was it? Oh, the, the <laughs> Who's that guy? Danish thing. The Danish. Is we're like, we're like that model with the, with the album. Right? Oh yeah, that's the second one. That happened later, though. but uh, so we had a write up. I feel horrible right now. He is from somewhere. Oh my Europe. gosh! Don't do that. <laughs> oh, somewhere. He's from. Like, oh, well, he was from. He's from Alsace Lorraine. <laughs> I'm so bad. I feel so horrible right now. Uh, Switzerland, something like that. I'm gonna say it's Switzerland. Was it Sweden? Maybe it was Sweden. Maybe it was Sweden. It was an asshole. You should one of, just, you should just like, just pick one. and Sweden. Like, I'm going to say it was Sweden. I'm pretty sure it was Sweden. Just I say, think. like, yeah, he was from Sweden. Okay. Who's gonna it was a guy from check. Sweden. A really cool guy. Um, who found, I think Sam actually found the review. And um, he just found our, our music just on Bandcamp. It was just, like, one of the featured albums of the week when it was new. And um, he just really liked it. It did a really cool review. It was really awesome to hear someone that wasn't a friend or a family member say such nice things about the music that we create and um, he was super impressed, he really liked it um, and it, it was on the Hype Machine too but it was just a link to his article but it was on the Hype, hype Machine through him which is also really cool because a lot of people found it that way and then one of those people was this model from uh, New Zealand what? who, um, her name's like Macy something. Her name's like Lord? No, it's, oh, I wish but her name's like Macy something, but um, I think it's. She like Instagram. Once she like Instagrammed a picture, and it was like on my way to a shoot, listening to some new tunes, and it was like hashtag a do caribou, and it had some lyrics to one of the album or something like that. But um, that was really cool. Um, it's, all, my, it's my most popular blog post ever. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. More popular than anything about like the rest of my life or my interests. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, check out this album by the Caribou, and then, as opposed to like, I got engaged, that's like six, <laughs> six views. Yeah, um, I think a lot of the noticing has to go to Kara, because Kara got... Yeah, Kara is really good She She had a friend, she gave, people. or she, she gave the album, or told the album to someone... Oh, Danny. Danny Poisson. Yeah, someone, Danny Poisson. a guy that has a lot of followers on his blog, Tumblr thing, and he, like, um... What is that called? Re whatever it Reblogged. Reblogged it. And um and then a bunch of people found it that way. So Kara is a big she the one for that one. So yeah. Ooh, go Kara. Yeah. <laughs> um you know, I don't know. Um This is where Andy tells us that he doesn't want to be. <laughs> this is just actually Oh, it's Sam. Um well, the future plans, as of now, are learn the new songs, play some shows, you know, um, get Jeremiah situated, he's new to the band, um, we have a new mysterious keyboardist coming into the scene soon, <laughs> maybe I should name drop now, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like the yeah, he's gonna have to cut this whole segment out. <laughs> <laughs> it'll just have to stop and then like you'll pick up me yeah. later but um ruined it just kind of get people situated and then i really like to play you know just as many shows as we can because shows are fun i mean in the future i guess the hope would be to release another album i have a bunch of songs written it's just a matter of finding time to like, you know kind of sit down and teach them to everyone and kind of you know make them sound good you know because you know, I write songs, but like everyone kind of adds their own little flavor to it, which is makes it collaborative and sound better, honestly. So, um, it just a matter of doing that, which just takes time. Um, I don't know. It's just gonna just kind of keep on doing that, see what opportunities rise up. Um, we'd like to play some shows outside of Salem, Portland, you know, Eugene, just closer stuff like that. That'd be fun. Do a tour. Is that realistic? I mean, like, honestly, short, the, the dream would do, be do like a short, like, like a week tour, like you know, like a maybe like a seven day. Like not a Ukraine Bay tour. We don't have that in us. We don't not a Ukraine Bay, but maybe you know, like, like a week. You know, like if I wouldn't, I wouldn't definitely 
Like four or five shows. Like four or five shows, like a five day tour, you know. I could definitely see that happening this year. I really love to do that. That'd be the ultimate dream, you know. Play like Olympia, Portland, Salem. I don't know. We could probably do Seattle. Yeah. Care not some people listen. Yeah. Seattle, 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 Olympia. Maybe uh, Washington, Oregon uh, tour. I mean, that would be Portland, that. I would. Salem, that's the ultimate dream. That's. It's just a matter of time planning. But that's. I guess that's the ultimate goal. Really, something I'll be going to her country. <laughs> Cool. You get on the billboard top. Hot, hot 100. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe a few more models will pick up her music. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that jacket? The, the Yeah, that one. The dark one. See, this, uh, this interview is actually going to no. be saying that's <laughs> yes, your question. You don't know where you <laughs> got it? <laughs> I've been playing drums since freshman year of high school. So that was seven years. Seven years. I have played in a ton of past bands. Uh, the first one was uh, the Stone Soldiers, but that had a couple of names. It was called Psycho Lobotomy. And before that, it was called the Fuzz Killers. Um, and then I played in a band called the Madrigals, Ivy Leagues, Big Rig. Oh, yeah, Franny and Zoe. And then. Did you drop for a friend? No, I only played. I recorded drums, but they. Oh, you're just a session music. I'm just a That's session cool music. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then another band called Short and Sweet, and I think, and I think. <laughs> I wish. It was short. Yeah, it was very short. It was short and sweet, literally. That band. That's exactly the perfect name for that band because it was short and sweet. Um, one of the greatest moments, I would say there, I have a couple, uh, one was, uh, at the Grand Theater, it was when I was in the band called the Madrigals, and I'm pretty sure we played that show, there was like this huge, uh, it was like the Eiffel Tower, and it had like a bunch of Christmas lights on it and it was like literally in the Grand Theater it almost like touched the ceiling it was like so huge and we had like this like body paint on us it was hilarious there was that and then uh, I was actually in this band called the gutters and we had a really cool show where we only had one song and then we jammed the rest of the show and those were some really really fun shows Uh, playing drums with Duke Caribou is awesome. I love it. It's it's really cool just because I've been playing music with Andy for a long time, and me and him definitely have a really good chemistry with music, so I always enjoy playing drums with and for Andy. <laughs> I met Jeremiah on Tinder. I met Chris through MySpace. I met Kara through a pottery class. And pottery. Andy, I found him in a tree. That's how I met pottery him. Uh, we recorded the album uh, with Squared Records, uh, Chris and Chris, as I like to call them. Yeah, Chris, the guitarist, wasn't there. Chris Ward. But Chris Ward. Like the compound, right? Yeah. In Almsville? It doesn't even have a, but you, know, you don't want to give it away. It's a compound. Yeah. 
pretty much with uh, Chris Ward out in this old man's garage. <laughs> old Chris's garage. <laughs> Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't Chris. It wasn't Chris Ward's place. It was some old dude. Yeah. Some old Vietnam vet or something like that. Like. I don't know him, but I know his grandson. All I know is he was old, and he wasn't doing well. That's too bad. I know. So we made that album. For him. So you brighten his day. Exactly. At night. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up! <laughs>I mean, yeah, those are like the main ones I like draw my influences from for sure. And Led Zeppelin, like all of those, but there's, I mean, there's a ton of music I like across the border, so. But those are all time. Mariachis. <laughs> Mariachis. <laughs> Inspired me. Just across the border. Pretty funny. This song's called Tesco Lawrence Love. <laughs>